All right, welcome to the bonus holiday hottie. We're, come and work out with me. We're going to do some interval training today. Uh, interval training is your cardio shortcut. If you are not familiar with interval training, you're in for a real treat. If you are, you're in for a treat. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are doing the mini burpee challenge, if you're doing interval training on that day that you're doing a burpee challenge, separate those two. Your goal is to get your burpee challenge in before you do your interval training. The purpose is that you are tracking your performance. And if you're tired out by your workout, whether it's strength or interval training, you want to make sure you get your burpee workout out of the way. Um, they're great morning movers if you want to start your day off like that. Jump out of bed, do a quick warm-up, grab a sip of water, get your burpees done. Then you're ready for the day. So today's workout, interval training workout, we're going to be doing a 30-30 timed circuit, which means that we are alternating 30 seconds of intensity followed by 30 sec seconds of an active recovery move. I'm going to be demonstrating the options that you have available to you. There is no equipment needed for this other than la, your own body. And... I chose two moves that are either no or relatively low impact so that everyone has the ability to join in and enjoy join in and enjoy this workout. I want to just give a shout out to everyone who is new who has never done this before. I applaud your courage to to take on this challenge and check out what Holly and Fit Yummy Mummy is all about. So uh, the first move that you're going to do, oh yeah, what I like to do is alternate between two intense moves. So you're not doing the, the same movement throughout the whole 30, 30, 15 minute workout. You're alternating between two different ones, um, kind of mixes it up, keeps your body challenged, gives you enough of a break so that you can come back to that next intense move with the same amount of intensity or more. And uh, let's see, active recovery, yeah, I'll cover that in a minute, but your two moves that you're going to be doing. <clears throat> don't fret if you're like, holy cow, <laughs> Holly, I can't do that. Don't worry because I'm going to show you an option and then I'll check the chat room if the options I show you are not um, appropriate or not good enough. So your first move is a burpee. Kidding. <laughs> I already have you doing enough burpees. The first move is a one leg inchworm and it's going to look like this. You're going to start off by finding your balance on one leg. Then what you're going to do is come down to the mat Placing your hands on the mat, keeping that back foot elevated, you're going to walk your hands all the way out into a full push-up plank position, keeping this leg elevated. Walk it all the way back and stand up. So squat it down, walk it out, walk it back in, and stand it up. And you'll alternate each round. So if we start off on the right leg, then the next time we come back to it, we switch legs. If you're like, oh no, one leg, ah! Don't worry, because you can always do this variation. The inchworm. So you're standing, you squat down, place your hands on the mat, walk it all the way out to that push-up plank position, walk it back in, stand it up. You can feel free to go, woo, put your arms up in the air if you want, however energetic you feel. Walk it out, walk it in, woo. I'll show you the second move. This is called a squat in and out. Now the key with the squat in and out is that <clears throat> you pretend like you're in a room with a low ceiling. So you never want to be standing upright. You want to keep it low. And when you keep it low, kind of thinking good posture, you know, chest is out, shoulders are back, um, nice soft bend in the knee. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so from here, and I'll show you the variations that you can choose from. From here, you're going to jump it out, jump it in, jump it out. Jump it in, all while staying nice and low. Notice, I'm not, I'm not coming up here. I'm keeping it low. So, and you can keep it low impact by doing it like this. Nice soft jumps. You can make it low impact. Or, no, this is no impact. Or, you want to increase the intensity? Boom, 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 boom. Keeping in mind, 30 seconds, you can experiment. So, what do you do for active recovery? This is one of the biggest mistakes moms make when it comes to interval training. They think they have to keep pushing the same level of intensity. When in fact, this is the time that you are choosing a movement that allows you to bring the heart rate down. So that way, when you go back to that intense move, you can hit it again with just as much or more intensity. If you keep the intensity level high throughout the workout, 
the overall level of intensity begins to decline the closer you get to 10 minutes and then 15 minutes. And then you're missing out on that post-exercise boost that your body's burning more fat and calories for the next 24 to 48 hours. So it is very important that you recover between these two moves. Otherwise, you're defeating the purpose of the workout. So what does active recovery look like? Guess what? It is up to you. I'm going to show you some options, but there is absolutely no shame in choosing this. No shame. And I was pretending like I just did something intense. That's why I was like, oh, <laughs> that's all I have to give. <clears throat> the two moves I'm going to do are the toy soldier, which is you're just kicking up opposite, or you're kicking up your leg, hitting it with your opposite hand. Toy soldier. You could even just kind of do a high knee. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with a high knee. <clears throat> or march in place. The other one that I'm going to do is the hip hinge. Now hip hinge, you could just place your hands on your hips and you're hinging forward. You feel that stretch in your hamstrings. And here the key is keeping your chin tucked so your neck is neutral with your spine. Soft bend in the knee. I like to add a prisoner. So hands are behind my head, elbows are out and wide. Sometimes I like to go wider stance, like a sumo stance, toes are pointed out, so I feel, feel that more of a stretch in my inner thighs. So you could choose that var any variation of a hip hinge. Looking at questions. Ah, okay, so if we want to do the burpees, we should do that instead of this interval training later. Um, the burpees don't take the place of your interval training workouts. You just don't want to do your interval training workouts and then followed by a burpee challenge workout. You want to spread those apart. And I'll be talking more about burpees and questions about the holiday hottie challenge after the workout as well. All right, there we go. Okay, so if there are any questions while I'm plugging this in, ask away. Otherwise, I'm going to answer them after the fact. I just want to get the questions out of the way that have to do specifically with the workout. So we're going to do 30 seconds of the one leg inchworm or the variation that works best for you. 30 seconds of active recovery. I'm going to be doing toy soldier or you can march in place. 30 seconds of squat in and outs. And then 30 seconds of a hip hinge. And we re re go through that round again and again. All right, here we go. We are ready. 